Do you want to have all your network devices using the same time? Do you want an easy to use solution to provide NTP service? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this using PFSense and its built-in MTP service. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to use PFSense and NTP to get all your devices in time sync. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Now here's what we're going to be talking about in this video, and that's how to use NTP with PFSense. Trust me, you got this one. First, we're going to go over briefly what is NTP. Then we'll show about enabling NTP and PFSense. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and ways you can really know what's going on and how to best use this for your situation. NTP or network time protocol is something very handy to have. The more devices you have on the network, the more it starts making sense why this is something you need to look at. The one of the biggest reasons is when you get into troubleshooting because you have everything referencing the same time source. Then in looking at device logs, diagnostic information, this is going to help you match up the events much easier to where you'll be able to help get things resolved much sooner. Now, there's several ways to go about doing it, and you may already have seen some of this. If you have been a shortwave listener for years and heard of something called WWV or WWVH, there's a Canadian equivalent to it. You've already been exposed to it. Your smartphone is already using that service because that's how it gets its time sync. It gets it from your carrier and the carrier has some sort of atomic clock or they're referencing out to a source to get that information. So if those devices are already using it, then why not extend that to your smart home? And really, it couldn't be much easier with PFSense. So let's shift over. We will go here basically you will start the process by going to services ntp and this is one that's installed out of the box we will click on enable ntp now you can choose the interface i would go with LAN because there's no reason for you to be an ntp source out over your internet connection localhost would pretty much restrict it to services on pfsense you might get some stuff out of the LAN, but let's just go ahead and cut to the chase and we'll go directly to LAN. Now, by default, it comes with something called pool.ntp.org. This is a very interesting process because you're not going to the same host. This is going to a pool, so it's using something called round robin DNS. So if you try to resolve pool.ntp.org right now, you'll get one host. If you do it, say, 15, 30 minutes later, just picking a number out of the air, you'll get a different host. You don't have to keep changing things because NTP servers come and go in some cases and you don't want to find that you are trying to reference a server that's either offline or is not going to be coming back i'll show you how to get to the information to make this much easier if we go to ntppool.org this is where you start getting the information you need to really give yourself some redundancy so if you click on the how do i use pool.ntp.org you'll see a sample template of what to do if you've never dealt with ntp before and you're doing this on pfsense lose the server that will cause problems it's not going to work right so you'll just do zero.pool.ntp.org one two three you need to use several and here's why because the first one is offline and you haven't hit that cycling point to where it will will reference another host give your ntp service on pfsense or whatever system you're doing this on a way to get more than one time server so what we'll go back here is we'll go to the ntp pool project now ideally you want this to be as close to you as possible because if you're referencing ntp servers in another country you've got latency we'll click on north america and you see the settings right there now i've already pulled the settings that we're going to need out into a file and it's going to reference you and you, you really can't drill down to well not easily drill down to ntp servers in a specific state but this gets you started so as you see it got we've got the default setting here and it's going to even if you set it to host it's going to sense that it's a pool and it's going to change it right back so don't worry about changing that setting and i also wouldn't worry about prefer you'll, you'll see why here in just a moment we will go here and we'll copy that and we 
we'll click add because we want to have multiples uh, best practices say that you want to have five, upwards of five i would say three to four should be sufficient so we'll do one then we'll go out here and do two and we'll add three now we don't need to add anymore and if you ever want to change it you can very easily just edit the field in place or do the just click the delete button now there's really not going to be a reason for us to do anything else now i if you want to go ahead and get some additional information then we will want to click on the rrd graphs you, you'll see some of that more as you get more into under the hood within pfsense we'll click on logging and then log system messages because the more information you've got the better you're going to be and we don't have to worry about ntpv3 it says authentication some companies will implement authentication so that only those with the credentials can use it we're not going to worry about that you get serial gps so if you've got a serial link to a gps server that's fine. PPS is a refined version. I'm going to simplify this a little bit of NTP. And there are little such as utilities will use this because they've got to have several places to the right of the decimal point of time accuracy. ACLs, we can say, okay, we only want these systems using it. Click on save. Okay, it's been changed successfully. If we go over here to status NTP, you see it's just, of course, we've just made the change. It's going to take it a little bit to figure out which ones are active now active peer that's going to be the one it's it's going to be leading with now you'll see stratum and your different stratums level basically comes down to how close you are to an atomic clock source atomic being the basic gold standard for this for you and i that's not going to be a big problem because we can be several stratums out for the accuracy level that we will need and this will be something that takes a period of time because it's got the the counter you see here tells you when it's going to pull it's not going to be a a process where it's going me 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 and it's you know it's really tying up bandwidth now this is the advantage of having your pfsense box be an ntp server because this way you don't have to have all your devices going out to the internet not going to be a big traffic user but every little bit adds up so this is going to take a little while to do and as you can see it's working on it and we can click refresh over here you know this is one of those deals it will happen when it's going to happen now the reference id this can either be the management ip address of the ntp server or it could be the actual server it's getting it from so with it being a stratum 2 this very well possibly could be a stratum 1 server you will see some other text out here dot gps there, there's several different text labels you can look up if you really want to get under the hood and it will give you an idea of the clock source that the ntp server that you're looking at is using now active peer is the one it's actually referencing you've got and then it's selected there's all nuances to this but basically you've got ones that are selected ones that are candidates that it may use it all just depends on which one it's gotten locked into with the lowest delay it gives you an idea of the offset the jitter and it's just going to be having more than one source is a good thing there's two ways you have of getting this information out to the devices behind your pfsense box you can either go in and manually configure it some devices give you that option some don't now here's a way to get pfsense to do the job for you if we go here to services and we'll go to dhcp server because by default this is set up when you go into your ntp when you go into your pfsense box and then we'll go down here we will look for ntp server now but default this is how you'll see it display advanced if you do click on display advanced what you'll do is plug in the ip address of the lan interface of your pf sense box because this is what dhcp will hand out when it is servicing a dhcp request so there's two different ways this potentially can help you one of which is for devices that allow you to set it this should fill in the blank and i'm gonna say should because as we all know technology is great when it works and occasionally it's going to have an attitude there are other devices that don't give you the option of setting ntp but will accept the information if the dhcp server provides it as a part of the ip address assignment process so this is something that may help you in ways you don't know about and if it doesn't work well at least you've offered the information and hopefully 
more vendors and companies will accept that kind of packet so that you can get everybody on the same page. The diagnostics, don't think we'll find anything under there. No, wouldn't expect to because it's status NTP is that was what we'll kind of hang our hat on. And you occasionally, you may see changes. You will notice over a period of time that when it's going to pull is going to start increasing. And where that comes in, the more comfortable the NTP service on PFSense is with what it's seeing, the less often it's going to check. And that's as a general rule. As we take that with a grain of salt, and you can kind of see what's going on. Now, see, we do have one stratum three, which in our case is fine. You typically don't want to hit your stratum ones. Now, this is going to automate that process for us because best practice is you want to go to the one hopefully that's closest to you, but you also want to save resources on the stratum ones, which are typically your ones that are tied into atomic clock or have a highly reliable time source, you want to let those service the stratum twos, and then you can go to, to a stratum two, maybe a stratum three. But over time, just watching this and you'll kind of see where it's going. So this is what it takes to set up NTB. Really very transparent, but on the other hand, it is very useful because it's going to help you do that much more with getting things up and running. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you, it provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.